Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I am bringing you today, a pretty good title of Twilight Shadows. It's a three and a half by five, and I completed this yesterday. I have a couple of other three and a half by fives, but I was pretty pretty happy with this one. Uh, I think I've been pretty happy with all of them. It's taken me a while to get back into mini mode. And you're like, whoa, I'd like to do some minis, Mike. What, what's up with minis? What do you do for minis? Ah, what do you do for minis? Well, use a smaller brush. <laughs> Is that helpful? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, what I would say is make sure that you know, um, uh, yes, you're using a smaller brush, but you, you want a, a mini to get done pretty quick. You don't want to be putting three or four hours into a mini trying to move every little detail in a pointillist manner from the reference over onto the um, board. You don't want that. What you want is a an expressive statement. So where in a larger painting you might be able to get a few details in um you have to content yourself in a mini with things like um, uh, expressive gestural brush strokes and modulation color modulation in fact i'd have to say the color modulation more so even than the brush strokes because quite often it's difficult to uh end up with like right now we have some pretty cool expressive brush strokes that's the drawing though um as i as i progress to the painting will we we retain a bit of the cool uh you know in fact that's one of the pluses and maybe minuses with the uh, video process is that you know you get to see all this uh, all the cool stages the painting was at before um you decided it was finished now um, this painting is also in the members area and what is in the members area I just uh, you know I've got a question on the email about <clears throat> somebody want, wanting to see real-time videos from me and I just assumed people knew that the members area is full of real-time videos it's practically it's not the only thing in there actually I do some specialty stuff in there uh, just for the members area where I do some reference prep which I think is absolutely critical to making good paintings as a modern painter um, and uh, a few videos end up in there that are just members only you know uh, generally speaking though what I do is I do a um, the real time I record everything real time I put that in the members area and then I do this 15 minute sped up version for the public so um, and they both are cool. Don't think that this is not a cool thing uh, because this is a bit of a, a time for me to talk with you um, directly as the painting's sort of occurring and the, um, you know, we're watching a painting happen in a fairly, you know, rapid manner. Um, but we get a chance to chat as that's, as that's going on. Um, and the live videos, generally I'm talking a bit more um, about the kind of stuff you might want to hear, like what colors I'm using. <laughs> what colors did I use in this? Well, I used a lot of uh, Dio, uh, Dioazine purple. I think I pivoted off of that mostly. Uh, with the purples, I like to bring in the raw sienna um, and yellow and or uh, yellow ochre um, to knock it back. Uh, uh, quite a lot of raw umber, uh, uh, black, white, raw umber. Um, and then at <clears throat> certain points I start just jazzing things up with the cad red um, and cadmium orange. I would say that's all the, all the colors that are in here. Black, dioazine, uh, violet, um, white of course, yellow ochre, raw sienna, raw umber, and cadmium red and cadmium orange, which is a you know, pretty good palette. You could do a heck of a lot with that. Um, in fact, that's my sort of basic earthy kind of palette um, with the exception here we brought in the dioazine so kind of what I've been riffing off of lately was you know basically kind of earth tone stuff uh, where I'm we're moving in actually I'm moving to the greens a little here too um, com compliments of the good old cad yellow and 
many times you don't think of yellow as just being green in disguise, but it really is. Unless you push it uh, with some red uh, or the orange, um, the, the cad yellow, it just wants to be green. You don't believe me? Just start sticking it in mixtures and watch how they green up, you know? Anyway, um, we were talking about minis, and um, so... Uh, also, you may have noticed I do my usual M. Francis grid, uh, which is just a subdivision um, halfway through the um, the board. I do that on all my work these days, and I have two bits of reference uh, composited, um, which are uh, uh, you know one has got the grid and the other does not. Yeah. Um, the grid, basically, it's just there to kind of help me out as I'm um, getting started. Just help me find my place. Uh, but I feel more than free to deviate or change things up at any point in time. The grid, it's not like I have the grid there to make sure I exactly copy the reference and all of its uh, particulars onto my painting surface. Speaking of my painting surface, we're painting on hardboard. It's got two coats of um, transparent gesso on it, um, and that's been sanded down, so it's quite a smooth surface. Sometimes with that transparent gesso, you can leave, uh, if you don't sand it down, you get a bit of a pebbly texture, which is uh, pleasant to paint on as well. Uh, lately, I've just been wanting things pretty dang smooth, and just letting my brush strokes create the texture. Um, so just talking about, uh, you know, uh, miniatures some more. Um, miniatures are uh so you've got compromises you have always have compromises when you're trying to translate your photographic reference into a good painting um, but you have even more with the miniatures so the main thing you're going to run into is wanting to um, express or, or delineate something that's in the reference and you just find it's exceedingly difficult with the brush which is you know feels like about as big as a 2 by 4 um, so what do you do yeah well my advice is just ignore whatever it is you were trying to express or get some impression of it down um, in this one I wasn't sure what I was going to do in the highlight area I was real sure about the purples and I knew I was going to get into these kind of clay tones and move into some reds and I knew it was uh, when it comes to purple I'm always using uh, either raw sienna or yellow ochre. Interestingly though you have to use a bit of white too or it doesn't even look purple. Um, for some reason dioazine uh, violet doesn't even look that violet until you hit it with a bit of white and then you really see what's up and that goes for mixtures too so if you're trying to get the, the dioazine to look uh, uh, real purple and you heard me say I just used raw sienna um, well, it would have to be raw sienna and a little bit of white, otherwise it doesn't look purple at all. It just looks like, I don't know, purple-ish? Hmm? Actually, it tends to kind of lean into the raw sienna-ish, purple-ish. gives you this kind of purpley, clay-y color. Um, but if you want actual violet, man, you got to always put, bring in a little bit of white. And that was the thing here. I wanted violets in the sky, um, but a muddy violet. I wanted, didn't want um, anything even close to. Um, in fact, you know, the steoazine, when you just hit it with white, it reminds you of like a Crayola crayon. You know, it's just so fake looking purple. And you might ask, well, what is it on your palette for if it looks so fake? Well, because um, I can't mix steoazine violet, it's not possible. It's not possible to mix it, um, at least with the colors that I have, um, you know, which, uh, you know, would be the, um, I have, you know, Cad Red or Lizard Crimson. Uh, you certainly aren't going to get even close to it with anything like a Burnt Sienna. Uh, you try mixing Cad Red and the Phthalo Blue together, and you get a Violet, but not, not anything like a real Violet, like Dioazine. So that's why it's earned its place on my palette. Um, but the first thing I do is I start modifying it and knocking it back because uh, you want your colors to look dirty. You don't want them to look like they come out of a tube. Uh, never. And the colors I tend to use uh, to do that, um, almost always um, raw umber and black. Those are my two favorites for that. 
Um, but you can use uh, you can also use a, a complementary color to to dirty things up. So say you have a red, you could throw a little bit of green in there, and that'll dirty it up in a hurry. Or the opposite's true, um, and 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 put into place on my uh, painting practice all the time, where I'm dirtying up the greens with reds, all sorts of reds, you know. Um, I throw all of the reds into my greens all the time. The alizarin crimson. Uh, <clears throat> you can even count the burn number as a red. We throw that in there. Burnt sienna, cad red. Love to throw cad red in the greens. It works good. And you can see even in the back, I've just got a lighter version of the same thing where there's some uh, warmish reds uh, created with the um, burnt sienna. And then um, I'm bringing in, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have a mix like that. I'll just start bringing permanent green light. Um, in this case, it was permanent green light, which I didn't mention. That was a secret color I didn't mention, sorry. Um, and mostly I didn't mention it because I'm just using it uh, to make some things green in the accents, you know. Uh, but it's pretty important, actually it's really one of the things that makes this painting work, I think, is that little bit of green um, valley or land, I almost called this twilight, looking over the valley, but we're not seeing much of the valley, all we're seeing is a strength of color. Um, but clearly, we'd have to be on a hillside or something, right? Uh, I really enjoyed doing a bit that bit of modulation of that purple um, streak right through the middle. Um, I knew I was going to do that, and I think that works well. Um, and uh, whereas on the bottom, I've just contented myself with pretty much abstractions. I kind of slashed it with a couple of dark stripes and... Um, of course, working off of the reference, pivoting off the reference, but always deviating from the reference. And speaking of, I've made quite a few paintings from this bit of reference. Most of them were blue, or blue, some variation of blue. I did one that was like a 12 by 12. I haven't seen it for a while, but I think it's down in the garage. Um, it was okay. Oh, I did a 5 by 5 which I have seen. Um, uh, and I did some other little stuff, but this is uh, the first time I've done the scene as a horizontal. And um, I'm real happy with it. I think it works. There's not a lot to it, you know, it's basically uh, kind of a... It would be a straight up tree portrait, uh, except for the horizontal emphasis, pushing a tree off to the side. And then, um, in the past, this bunch of bushes on the side, I barely even delineated them, but here they got played up quite a bit. Um, because I needed uh, shapes to counterbalance the tree and it ended up working out real well. I'm real happy um, Really really happy with the way this painting worked out and really happy it didn't over overwork it or overdo it um, It did have uh, some nice gestural quality at one stage, which you know, we lost a bit, but um, we didn't go too far uh, That's always the thing, you know, you want to um, uh, every stroke you lay down, you know, you, you add something and you lose something. That's the thing. It's always, uh, always a compromise. Anyway, we're at the end of the painting and the video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you, uh, uh, coming around here to spend some time. Check out the members area or you can tip on over to my website. Uh, there's a nice big fat donation button there and you can send me. Um, a bunch of money to help uh, me live. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Thanks. Appreciate that. Oh, or buy a painting. Um, that's always good. At some point, I will be retooling that store area. Uh, I know it can be. Um, speaking of, if, if there's ever a painting on a video that you wanted to uh, purchase, shoot me an email and you can get to uh, my website. Um, at land, down below landscapepainter.co.nz and um, shoot me an email let me know you're interested I'll work it out we'll, we'll make a deal anyway until they come back with another video do me a favor do me a solid take good care of yourself your family all your loved ones and be patient with people that uh, have different beliefs than you do um, and stay out of trouble <laughs>